Hi everybody and uh, welcome to this video on how to adjust, modify and generally uh, improve the overall look of ready-made figures for your model railways and dioramas. As I'm sure many of you are already aware, uh, there's a huge range of uh, figures available on the market today uh, from the likes of Presser and Knock uh, through to Backman and Hornby and Dapol. Uh, you can even get 3D printed ones now from people like Model U. Um, the figures we're looking at in this video are Backman ones. Uh, these two are from their locomotive crew set. And we're showing you how we can update them and uh, make them fit in better with uh, other figures on your model railway. So, before we start with uh, what needs to be changed about them and how we're going to do it, a uh, little top tip for you. Uh, obviously, you want to be painting these figures, and if you're trying to hold them with your and as you can see here, you get paint all over your thumb and your fingers and you, you can't paint the figure properly. Um, some people use tweezers. My top tip for you is get yourself one of these coffee stirrers and a little bit of blue tack. Uh, obviously just press the blue tack onto the end of the stirrer with your thumb, make it uh, nice and smooth and flat. And just simply press the figure into the blue tack and there you go. A really quick, uh, cheap and easy way of holding your figures and now you can you know, access all parts of them and. Uh, paint them up as you want to and detail them uh, virtually hands free so uh, there we go now I've shown you that let's uh, actually get on with what we need to do to these figures so at first glance they're not too bad however if you get up close to them you can see there's uh, quite a bit of flashing along them uh, lots of seam lines and this sort of thing and it shouldn't be there um, so first thing to do is remove those uh, I like to go in there with a the flat edge of a scalpel blade just carve away uh, sort of you know the heavy excess uh, and then uh, when that, that sort of back way needs to be go back in then with a, a small file uh, and just tidy up any little sort of rough edges and bits we've left behind. Uh, removing all of these now will obviously result in a better looking model uh, when we're finished. Um, obviously take note if you with certain figures you might want to have a, a seam line on the trousers or a jacket so uh, don't remove everything uh, if it actually should be there but uh, although it shouldn't let's get them gone. Now that's been done, let's pay a little bit of uh, close attention to other bits that are not quite correct with these figures. Uh, for example here, this guy's arm appears to be formed into his torso, uh, which is completely wrong. So we're going to go in there now and uh, open up that gap. I'm going to use uh, a razor saw and the scalpel again for doing this. And when that's done, it should look something like this. There we go. Much better, if I say so myself. All I've done there is just take the uh, razor saw, follow the line of the arm, and then clean up, uh, like I say, with the scalpel blade at the end. Big improvement already. Next thing to do now, of course, is uh, paint the figures. Uh, in my view, the paint from Backman uh, on these is um, not brilliant. The colours are all wrong, and it's a little bit messy around the edges. So uh, we'll go in now and uh, sort that out. Okay, so don't panic. I'm not going to show the entire process here now of actually painting these little figures because there's lots of videos on YouTube already that sort of talk you through this process and everyone's got their own little sort of ways and styles of doing these things. Um, the main things for me is getting a block of colour on there to work with first of all. So if you need primer, go in with primer. With these I'm not going to bother um, because I've already cleaned the surface up. So good base colour for the skin tones and then it's a block of colour for each bit of clothing. And then on top of that we're going to go with layers of uh, different paint shades and washes just to make everything uh, look sort of correct. Like that. So there we go, here's the first stage complete. Uh, jacket's been painted in um, with a sort of darker blue. Trousers haven't been touched yet, they're still in the, the backman blue. It's far too bright and shiny, uh, I think you'll agree. Um, but just going in again, you can see that we're picking out areas around the face, getting those details showing, and also picked out his shirt in white. And there we go, uh, we've changed the colour of those trousers now. Uh, I've gone over with a, a lighter shade uh, using a matte paint finish so we haven't got that bright shine on them anymore. Uh, now we've got a nice even coating on there, we're ready to go in now with washes and sort of pick out that detail and add a little bit of weathering. Just very quickly before we go in with the washes and weathering, make sure we've got everything touched up with the paintbrush that needs to be. So handle on the shovel's been done, 
uh, you can see here the bottom of the jacket has been painted in. We've got a nice crisp clean line there. No uh, bleeding of the colours between the jacket and the trousers. Hands and fingers are painted. The hairline's been done. Uh, we've cleaned up the back of the cap. which has a nice straight edge around the band there. Uh, and just gone in and made sure things like the shirt is white and the collar isn't uh, covered in jacket paint. Just quickly take this opportunity to do a, uh, a comparison between the one we've now been working on for a couple of minutes and one that's not yet been touched. And so it's now time to go in with those weathering washes. Uh, I'll be using the Model Mate Slate Grey Weathering Liquid. Be very careful with this stuff guys if you're using it. It's a brilliant product uh, to work with, however it flows really quickly and it goes everywhere if you spill it. I've just touched the end of the brush to it and it's soaked it all up there. And all I'm going to do is just go into all the little areas, first of all uh, where we want a bit of shade uh, and then just working in and around all the little bits of detail, the creases and fold lines of the trousers, under the jacket, under the arms and just anywhere that, again on, on real clothing, uh, you see dirt and marks and things that build up. Uh, Thankfully, there are quite a few colour photographs um, of Loco Crew from on the footplate uh, back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, so you can, again, turn to those and use them for reference uh, for how these guys looked when they were actually working back in the day. Uh, and again, just build up in gentle layers, don't go mad. Uh, and as it dries, you'll see how it looks and you can add more or take it away if you need to. And there you go. Uh, I'm rather happy with that, if I say so myself. Um, again, we've just gone in with a couple of light layers of the wash there, and to all those little gaps uh, and uh, the crease lines, like I said before, made sure that there's no uh, bits that have been missed, nice even covering, no uh, spots and, and dirty stripes. And all in all, I think that uh, from where we started a few minutes ago, this is a, uh, a big improvement on this one little figure. So now let's have a look at the other one and see what we can do with him. The initial process is exactly what you've just seen, clean up and repaint. Uh, but now we're going to look at some little details we've got here. So this guy's got a cat badge because he's the driver. So I'm going to use the uh, 174 Humboldt Red uh, to replicate the enamel badge you see there. So we've got a little bit of silver on his cap. And the only way we're going to get there uh, in there accurately is I'm going to use the head of a pin to apply this. So just a little touch on the pin head. Uh, and then very, very delicately just touch it into the area where you want it to be. Now don't worry if you go a little bit over at this point or smudge it. Uh, you want to make sure, first of all, you've got enough on there, you can see it. And then try and draw it across in the line that uh, is the shape of the badge. And when that's on, I'm then going to work, go back over uh, with a clean dry pin head, clean off any excess, and then touch up the, uh, the black again around it. And when it's done, it'll look something like this. There we go one cap badge fitted. Uh, obviously we can't read the, uh, the word driver, um, which would be rather nice if we could. Uh, but there we go, so you can see, uh, looking around him, we've given him the, the wash of dirt uh, to sort of tone down his clothing. Uh, he's older because he's a driver, so uh, he'll have white hair, or grey in this case. Uh, we've given him a little bit of a sideburn as well. Um, and just uh, a general look of uh, a guy who's been on shift all day and he's, looks like he's ready to go home. And there they are, uh, basically done. Uh, as you can see, a uh, big improvement from uh, how they were when we started a few minutes ago. So what we've got to do now is uh, pick a loco and put them on the full plate. And there you are. If I say so myself again, I think they look a lot better than they did uh, when we started. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope I've given you all a few ideas and a bit of inspiration to go and improve the look of your own figures, uh, whether it be you know, from Backman or Hornby or whoever. I just want to say thanks for watching and bye for now.